Okay, so in this video, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually solve for each of these situations right here. But really what we're trying to focus on is how you'd write a mathematical equation for each of these. So if, if you're definitely following what I'm saying about how to write these, each of these down as an equation, then you're on the right track. If you're feeling a little bit shaky in how I'm solving for these, that's okay. We'll get better at this as we go on. Um, but still, I'll try and explain in the clearest way possible. So in the first one, it says 7 times a number is 35. What is the number? Well, 7 times a number can be written as 7x. That means 7 times a number. And is 35 means equals 35, because is means equals. And to simplify this one, if 7 times something is 35, well then 35 divided by 7 gives you the missing number, which is 5. And here, that equals x. So in this case, x equals 5. And in the next problem, and again, if, if, if this is where you're getting shaky, which is how did I just solve that, think of inverse operations going backwards and forwards between multiplication and division, but also remember our goal right now is that you could set the equation up. If you can solve it, that's just a great bonus. So now it says 3 times a number plus 15 is 24. What is the number? Well, 3 times a number is 3x plus 15 is 24. Now, this time, same setup with, with is, it's equals, but now we have a little bit more to deal with. But this time I'm going to break it down two steps. I'm going to say if 3 times something plus 15 is 24, well then doesn't it make sense that 24 minus 15 would equal 3 times the missing number? Which is to say that, okay, if you took a number, multiplied it by 3, and then added 15 to get 24, if I'm to work backwards, first I've got to subtract the 15 from 24, and, and that'll tell me what 3x was, and then I've got to figure out what x is next. Fortunately, 24 minus 15 is 9, and that's equal to 3x. So x has to be equal to 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. And there, I was just working backwards in two steps. Um, so in the next one, here it says twice a number, so let's write it down on the equation as we look at it. Twice a number, 2x, right, 2 times a number, is 3 less than 5 times another number. So 5y minus 3. And all I'm doing there is taking 3 away from 5 times a number. Don't be confused. Don't try and write 3 minus 5y. When you see um, it's 3 less than, that means minus 3, of course, because you're taking 3 away from your total you would see 3 minus 5 times another number if they wanted you to write 3 minus 5y. Now the other equation we have here is 3 times the second number, so that's y, so 3y, is 15. What are the numbers? Well first we can solve for y, right, because it says 3y equals 15. Well then 15 divided by 3 gives us y, and y is 5. Now, this is fun, we can use this and plug it into the first equation. Because now we know what this y is, and that'll tell us what x is. So what do we do? Well, 2x, it says, equals 5 times y, which is 5. So 5 times y is 25, minus 3. So that means that 2x equals 22. And, of course, dividing by 2 on both sides, because 2 times something gives you 22, we'll cut 22 in half by dividing by 2, and x is equal to 11. So in this case, x is 11, and y is 5. Moving on to part D. Now it says one number is, so x is 25 more than 2 times another number. Then it says if each number were multiplied by 5, so 5x, y, their sum would be 350. So 5 times x and oops, 5 times y would give you 350. What are the numbers? Okay, so in this one, and I'm a little bit stumped about this one because I know how to set this up, right? It says that that 5 times each number, like multiply each by 5 and add them up and you get 350. 
and we know that one number equals 25 more than twice another number, I know from instinct, of course, that x has to be bigger than y, because you plug some value in for y, double it, add 25, and you get x. But, but what's tough here is I'm not sure how to explain it to you with, without you having seen a little bit more algebra, but I will try. Um, here's what I would do. Well, I know there's a common factor between x and y here. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to use something called the factored form, which tells me 5 times x plus y still equals 350. And all I did there was pull this common factor out of both expressions. So instead of multiplying 5 by x and by y, we find the sum of x and y and then multiply it by 5. This is the same thing under the distributive property. That being said, now what I see is 5 times something is 350. So using all the stuff we've been talking about so far, 350 divided by 5 has to equal that something, or the sum, which is x plus y. So x plus y now equals what? Well, what's 350 divided by 5? Well, that's 70, just like 35 divided by 5 is 7. And now we're getting somewhere. Next, we know that, that x equals 25 plus, plus 2y. So what do we do? Well, well, if we know x equals this stuff right here, we can plug that into this equation, which doesn't seem helpful at first, but what it does when we, when we re rewrite, it, rewrite it is to, to, ha to give us only one variable in the first equation, which is super useful. So now in the first equation, instead of x and y, I'm going to substitute or replace this x with this expression right here. So that means I'll get 70 equals 25 plus 2y, which I'm writing in place of this x, plus y. And now you can see, oh, now we only have one variable. We can combine these two. That makes 3y, right? Two y's and another y is 3y, plus 25 equals 70. Now I can solve for y. Okay, so now to solve, what we're going to do is subtract 25 from both sides, right? 70 minus 25 is 45, which I made a mistake on, and this is now an edit, as you can probably tell, and the student caught it, and I'm really glad. 25 minus 25 is 0, so now we have 3y equals 45. 3 times something is 45, so 45, right, using the inverse, divided by 3, equals that something. In other words, 45 divided by 3 is y. And what's 45 divided by 3? Well, that's 15. So now we know for this... 15 equals y. And I'm going to plug that back into this equation, right? 70 equals x plus 15. So what does x equal? Well, if something plus 15 is 70, then if we take 15 away from 70 or from both sides of the equation, we get that missing something. So we can figure out what x is. And 70 minus 15 is 55. So that's our answer for x as well. Now we have two more to go. I know it's taking me a while, but, but we're almost there. So the sum of two consecutive integers is 35. What are the numbers? This is a classic problem. So consecutive integers mean numbers that come right after each other. So they're one apart. So this tells us that the first number, x, and the next one, x plus 1, right? Because whatever x is, the next number has to be that number plus 1. If we add them together, it tells us that that equals 35. So if we combine this and simplify, we get 2x plus 1 is 35. That's okay. We can subtract 1 from 35, and 2x equals 34. Now, this is getting crowded on here, but I'll say that if 2 times x gives you 34, then 34 divided by 2 has to give you x, right? That's the 2 times some number is, is 34, and that number has to be 17, and x is 17. We found out that x is 17. Well, the consecutive number, the one after it, is one more than that. So x plus 1 is 18. So in this problem, the two numbers are 17 and 18. And then the last problem, we're told what? Peter is three times as old as he was six years ago. 
How old is Peter? Okay. So so when does this happen? Let's let's clear off some of this stuff because we definitely ran out of room here. Okay. So it says that Peter is so we don't know how old he is, but whatever age he is, it's equal to three times as old as he was six years ago. So whatever age he was six years ago, whatever age he was now, think back six years, so x minus six. Multiply that by three, and that's his age today. So how old is he? And all I did there was say, okay, this is his age right now. This is his current age. We don't know it. But they're saying that if you took his age from six years ago, which is whatever he is now, x minus 6, and multiplied it by 3, 3 times, you get x, his current age. So I'm just relating these two. Now it seems like you can't do anything here, but again, the, the distributive property comes to our rescue. And we want to distribute this 3 to these two parts right here, and multiply. So now I get x equals... I'm just rewriting this x over here. 3x minus 18. And all I did was take 3 times x and then minus 3 times 6. And now I can solve this. The way I would solve this is to say, okay, let me take x away from both sides. And let me add 18 to both sides. I'm going to do this move all at once. Okay. So when we take a negative 18 and add 18 to it, we've got nothing. Right, those are opposites. Here we start with x and take x away. That goes away. It's 0. Here 3x minus x is 2x. And this 18 over here had nothing to interact with, so it's still just 18. So now 2x equals 18 and x equals 9, right? Because 2 times something is 18. That number is 9. If we don't know, we can say, oh, we'll take 18 and divide it by 2. Right? Work backwards. Something times 2 is 18, work backwards to say that 18 divided by 2 has to be this missing number. So he's 9 years old, and does this make sense? Well, if he's 9 years old now, this is x, is he 3 times as old as he was 6 years ago? Well, 6 years ago, 9 minus 6, he was 3, and yes, if we multiply that by 3, we do get his current age. So I write, um, again, in these examples, uh, what I really want you to follow is to see how I set the equations up based on the words they give me. Now in terms of how I solved for x, I used a variety of methods, mostly focusing on inverse operations um, but and substituting. But, but that was might have been new for you, so hang in there. Uh, don't give up if that seemed overwhelming.